I love it. I think it's the best place. There ain't no place. Look at somebody say, there's no place like ABC. Amen. I, I mean, there ain't nothing to talk about. There ain't nothing to talk about. Amen. Let the devil stay mad. I'm glad he's mad. Amen. Because he done left a lot of churches alone. That's when you in the red. When the devil's not trying to stop you. Amen. He shut a bunch of them down. He don't have to fool with them. He, he, his inventory is light right now. No, it's not. It's heavy. Amen. Because the anointing is in this place. Amen. Amen. So as, I mean, your life is going to go as your faith goes. As your faith goes, you're going to be faced with situations just, I mean, in the near future where you're going to have to exercise faith like you've never exercised it before. You're going to have to use your faith. You ain't going to be able to call anybody. You ain't going to be able to talk to anybody. You're not going to be able to get advice and counsel. You're going to have to stand on your faith. Amen. The devil is relentless. How many of y'all know that? He's relentless because he knows his time is short. He knows he's doomed. And he knows that God loves you more. He knows that. He knows how much God loves you. In his realm, he understands it better than we understand it. Yeah, because in our realm, everything is comparative. So the way we would love growing up dictates a whole lot of how we love and trust as we get older. You see what I'm saying? But in the devil's realm, he knows I got defeated because of y'all. God destroyed me for y'all. That's, that's what he knows in his realm about us. We walk around depressed and forgetting all the wonderful things God has done and trusting in ourselves and our own abilities and, and, and not, you know, following the plan of God. That's us in this realm. We walk around doing that. But in the realm where the devil is, he knows the truth. He knows that God loved you so much that he destroyed all of his works. Can I preach in here? Yeah. Yeah. And if you ever tap into that knowledge, you'll have victory in your life. That's the knowledge he don't want you to have. That's the only reason the devil gonna fight a church. He gonna stop you from coming and getting the knowledge to defeat him. The devil is relentless. The more we fight the enemy, the more he continues to fight back. He doesn't stop. Amen. Amen. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee. But he's coming back. He's going to come back with something else. And usually he keeps coming with the same thing. Because there's only certain things that get you anyway. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all, he ain't bringing crap to you. That don't make your head itch. <laughs> He gonna bring something else, amen. A uh, baby mama drama. He know that to get you. That's a thorn in your side, and he'll keep jabbing at it until you get it resolved, amen. And some things don't get resolved. You just have to get peace about it, amen. And I'll, yeah, I jacked that up. Yes, I jacked that up, but I have peace about it. It's not keeping me up at night anymore. That situation is jacked up. Yes, I made the wrong decision. Amen. But I'm past it in my mind and in my heart. I still have to deal with it every now and then. But I'm past it. The more we fight the enemy, the more he continues to fight back. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So even after you stop him, he starts walking again. Seeking a way to get you. There is victory in Jesus, but it doesn't come without a declaration and acts of faith. 
That's the way faith works. Sometimes you just need to declare it. No devil, not this time. Remember devil, I got peace about that. You're not allowed to interrupt my peace anymore. That's what peace means. And uh, God's peace surpasses my understanding. So, devil, please, what you're doing is smoking mirrors. I'm not going to let you take my peace in this situation anymore. You got to look at somebody and say, you got to declare it. You got to say it out of your mouth. Say it, and then you got to show it with acts of faith. That means you got to move like it's not bothering you anymore. <laughs> so you can't just declare it, but then you got to show it with your acts. Move like you passed it. When the devil said it in front of you, move past it. Look at somebody and say, keep it moving. <laughs> you got to keep it moving. Hebrews 10 and 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man don't keep it moving, if you keep it moving, that means you're moving past it. You're going forward. But if you're drawing back, he said, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Yeah, because when you're drawing back, you're going back into what the devil has done. For, I mean, what the devil is telling you. You're going right back into that. So you got to keep, look at somebody and say, keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. He ain't nothing but talk anyway. You the one that do the stuff. Amen. So sometimes you just got to tell the devil, yeah, yeah, that was my bad. I'm agree with the adversary quickly. Yes, I, that was my bad. But I'm past that now, and I have peace now. And you don't have the right or the authority to bring it back. If God said he won't remember it anymore, devil, you can't bring it back. Amen. Heard this one brother say, some of us are fighting expired fights. You wasting your time fighting a fight that has expired. God ain't even dealing with it no more. God is like, I don't remember. What are you talking about? It's expired. Can I keep preaching in here? When we act in faith, we are reminding the enemy who has the power. When we act in faith, we must always believe when fighting spiritual battles. So you have to act in faith and when you do, you remind the enemy who has the power. Your action in faith. So when there's fear there and you're afraid to do it, if you act in faith, it reminds the devil who has the power. See, all it is, well I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I, I have to. All it is is him trying to make you think something. He don't really have the power to do anything to you. He needs for you to do it. So he builds all kind of things around your life to try to make you do something. So he can take it back, go back and tell it and tell God. But if you repent it of it, God is like, I don't know what you're talking about. Get out of my face. Telling the devil, you keep it moving. Yeah, Matthew 28 and 18, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I think I read the scripture every week. All power is given unto me. So if all power is given unto him, what is the devil working with? No, he's working with something. He's working with your power. If all power is given unto Christ and Christ is inside of you, the devil has to work with your power. So your power to speak, death and life and the power of the tongue, he just got to get you saying the wrong stuff. Take every thought captive, bring it into the uh, obedience. He's got to mess with your thoughts, make you think the wrong thing. So you thinking, saying, that's going to cause you to start doing the wrong thing. Then you come to church, oh, the devil is busy. The devil's not busy. You're busy. He loaded you up 
with the wrong thoughts, the wrong talk, and now you're doing the wrong actions. Then, if, if the devil was doing it, then the devil and you would have to stand before God in judgment. Devil ain't gonna stand with you. You're gonna be right by yourself. Uh, what a devil at. Uh, I heard he's around these in this area somewhere. God gonna be like, no, the devil don't have nothing to do with this. Can I preach in here? See, this is what spiritual warfare is all about. Spiritual warfare is more than just, you know, sitting at home and fighting the devil in your mind like that. No, you got to fight thoughts and different things because of the stuff you're doing. You got to get control of your, look at somebody say, get control of yourself. Because you won't be able to blame the devil. Yeah, I could just hear God. He going to tell you, he going to say, well, did you not read the word where he was defeated? And I rose with all power. Then I gave you that power. Then I told you greater works that I did than you would do. So what does the devil have to do with this? Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah, a lot of spiritual warfare is stop doing it. Oh, that's some great warfare right there. Stop doing it. Have somebody shacking. Go on top, uh, uh, email me, uh, brother. You know, I just, we are just, I just not ready to get married. But oh, you know, I love her and this and that. I said, boy, you ready to do some spiritual warfare? Move out. That's warfare. That's spiritual warfare. Move it. You can't pray and shack. No, you can't do that. I question whether or not you even save. I really question if you even love the Lord if you shack it. Yeah, I think you love the human body and the opposite sex, hopefully, more than. More than you do the Lord. Got to put an asterisk right there in 2022. I don't, I don't know who you're living with. We don't know what its name is. I, I just left Atlanta. Lord have mercy. I don't know. I don't even know why that city still exists. I, it's hard to believe. It's, it's hard to believe. That's Sodom and Gomorrah. Went to the aquarium and young kids... 13, 12, 13. Boys and boys holding hands and kissing. Girls and girls that young. It's like, well, I want to break this glass and let this tiger shark, whatever it is, let it loose. Let it go to just chew it. Need to end this. I go down with it. Ah, just, that's the Old Testament prophet. Kill everybody, me, everybody. <laughs> Sleep to be over. Flood this thing. <laughs> my goodness. Woo, I was so, I mean, I enjoyed my time, but I was ready to go. Man, it's sin, sin. And then when these tragedies start happening, People never relate the tragedy to the sin in the land. They don't know that sin judges itself. You're not going to keep being immoral. You're not going to keep promoting the LGBT. You're not going to keep putting these drag queens in these schools in place of the prayer that you took out and not expect bad things to start happening to these children. You're not going to keep killing these innocent babies in the womb and think that it's not going to require more blood.
Can I keep preaching it? The shield of faith is our greatest protection against the attacks of the enemy. The, look at somebody say the shield of faith. Shield of faith. You know, when you really, really believe something, people can't change what you believe. Remember a few years ago, my mom and somebody was coming to do some work for her, and he was Hebrew Israelite. Now, my mama been in the faith a long time, but she don't know the doctrine of the Hebrews and stuff. She don't know all of the, you know, the way they sway scripture and shift stuff around and make it look like God was racist and all that old foolishness they talk. She don't know any of that, but she knows Jesus. So a boy come in there talking the yin yang and the foolishness and my mama just the Holy Ghost just rose up and she like, uh, nah. And she don't have to know the inner workings. But if she's filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost was her shield of faith and it protected her from that foolishness. Because the shield of faith, the Bible said, will protect you from the wiles of the enemy. So whatever the enemy is shooting, if it gets you, you didn't have a shield. And if you don't have a shield, you're not a good soldier. You be done shot one of the members. Ephesians 6 and 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. Above what? All. all. How much is all? all? Above everything else, take the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench how many fiery darts? All. How many fiery darts? All. all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's what the shield of faith does. The enemy will attack our minds. Because the only way we can lose is to abandon our faith. So if you keep believing, you'll weather the storm with belief. If you keep believing, you'll pass it. But once you stop believing, you'll lose. Amen. And you know, as a pastor, I can't, I can't help you believe. <laughs> that's on you look at somebody say that's on you that's on you I can't help you believe that's on you and when you stop believing you stopped you can't help me no way if you stop believing if you start believing something else you stopped you can't help me if you believe in something different you see what I'm saying it's all about look at somebody say it's all about your belief so as long as you believe in Man, don't, don't say God brought you here and then stop believing that. Amen. That's spiritual schizophrenia. That don't make any sense if you said it. But the enemy will attack, attack your mind and test what you said. See if you really mean what you said. Because on a good day we say things. Don't we say things on a good day? Ah, never! That's the, that's the good day. That's the lead off to the good day speech. Yeah. But on a bad day, are you able to still believe what you said on the good day? Amen. Amen. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So renewing of your mind means that your mind is going to get contaminated every now and then. And you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. yeah. It could have just been a savage monopoly game. <laughs> and cuss words and hate and Cigar burning and you stopped smoking for years, but because they got park place, you got a light one. Open the dos equis and just, just that, that means you've been playing too much. Amen. 
We pray for these brothers here. Some of them get carry tables around in their trunk. They have portable tables with wood, wood engraved and crown molding around the base. Granite top. Custom signed by Mr. Monopoly. He signed this one. The shoe is a real miniature boot. Something small can really wear it. <laughs> but they say, no, they don't do that. But some people, you just have that moment of slippage and you need your mind renewed. You watch the wrong movie and it got in your chest and start turning your own feelings around and messing with you, you got to go get renewed. Now if, I'm t now, if you supersonic save and it's automatic and you can just, I'm not talking to you. But give me your card. You're better than us. Amen. And because we got to renew our minds daily. Amen. If you have a TV, a radio, or walk riding by billboards on the highway, you got to get renewed. Yeah. So the Bible said. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is how you're going to know what is good, acceptable, and perfect. The perfect will of God. Amen? The devil has already been defeated. Already. That's why I did that message last week. Because I wanted you to know, though I talked about him in the war on witchcraft, I wasn't giving him props. I talk about him to show you how powerless he really is. Amen. Because if he destroy you, then you won't be held accountable by God. Because he did it. But if he gets you to destroy yourself, that's your fault. Man, I just preached in here. Yeah. God ain't asking you about Satan. He gonna ask you about you. Adam tried that. Oh, it's the woman. Then the woman, oh, it was the devil. Now nah, y'all getting punished. Because I told y'all what to do. Why did you listen to it? Can I keep preaching? The devil has already been defeated. So in order for him to harm us, he has to make us think he can. <laughs> y'all hear that? In order for him to harm us, he has to make us think he can. Yeah. So he gets in your head to make you do something to take you away from God, take your eyes off God. If your eyes are off God, your eyes are on your own ability. If you're depending on your own ability, the devil's got you. Because none of us are good enough. None of us are strong enough. None of us are smart enough. I am inclined to believe that Adam was the smartest human ever created. I'm inclined to believe that because everything that was in him had to be in everyone else. I done went to the, I done went to the rewind message. Let me back it up. But everything that was in him though. That, that, so if he was the smartest and he was deceived, how was he deceived? He took his eyes off God and started looking at her. She took her eyes off him and started looking at the devil. The smartest people ever created. Anybody that's smart now had to inherit it from Adam and Eve. So if they were deceived, you're no match. You take your eyes off God, you're no match. Amen. You're going to be in worse shape than they were. This is where the shield of faith comes to guard us from these mind attacks. So the shield of faith will protect us from mind attacks because that's all the devil can really send. He has to attack your mind. So he'll jump in somebody, make them do something to you to change the way you were thinking. 
you were happy and everything was great because you had found the Lord all was good and then he jumped in that boyfriend you shouldn't have he jumped in that girlfriend you shouldn't have he jumped in that witch on Instagram you shouldn't be watching I'm preaching. Can I, can, can I keep going? Yeah. He jumped on that computer. You shouldn't be turning on at 2 a.m. Yeah. Jumped in that phone. Looked in them contacts. He's doing all that. He has to get, excuse me, he had to get somebody to do something. Because if they do something to you, your feelings will change. Now you're hurt. Now you took your eyes off God. And instead of praying for that person, you want revenge. Instead of praying for that person, you want to blame them. Now you're on the devil's path. Because that's all he does all day long. Now he's got you like him. Now you're walking around feeling like him. Yeah, you're looking at people. You're mad at another human so mad that you've altered the entire course of your life. For vengeance. Not even knowing that you're in spiritual warfare. Yes, sir. Come on. And the devil jumped in your friend. That's why you got to be careful who you got as friends. Amen. Amen. Some folk love devilish friends. Because it reminds them of the good old days. You still hanging out with Boudreaux. You've been saved for 20 years. Boudreaux, he, he is a cigarette. That's your friend Boudreaux. The square. <laughs> yeah, he drink, he cuss, he smoke, he gamble, he fornicate, he kill, everything. But that's your dog. Yeah, leave the door open like that. Mm -hmm. Boudreaux sending all kind of voodoo to your house. Just by association. Yeah. Somebody need a purge of their contacts. I just feel the Holy Ghost saying that. You need to go home today. Go through your contact. That needs to be a purge. And some of them you need to block, then delete. Because you know you can't handle when that number comes up. I'm preaching in here. That's all right. You better know your... You better know. You better... Let me tell you. If you don't know, the devil definitely does. Ain't it funny how when you're going good and you just, hey, waking up in the morning, oh, thank you, Jesus, it's going to be a good old day today. No, it's not. No, it's not, because that contact you ain't blocked. This is the day they're going to text. You don't think the devil worked through people like that? He has to, because he don't have power. He has to use people's power. Man, I'm preaching in this place today. Hey, Amen. But I have folks so mad at me, they just call me the blocker. Oh, you just, when you know, you just block all the time. You just, man, some folk can't contact me. You can't contact me. You got devils, bro. You can't contact me. Soon as I do the message on witchcraft, you gonna try to give me some kind of demonic prophecy or something. You can't be in my life. But the devil has already been defeated, so in order for him to harm us, he has to make us think he can. And this is where the shield of faith comes to guard us from these mind attacks. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. This is the battlefield. Imaginations and high things. In your mind. In your mind. You can't even explain the sin that you're addicted to. You know why you can't explain it? Because after you commit it, you hate yourself. Now, why am I doing something that makes me hate myself? There's an imagination there. And it's a high thing. It's elevated itself above your reason. Reason would say, if I do this, I'm going to feel bad afterwards. 
That's reason. It's high thing. It's above your reason. When it's above your reason, you don't think about it until after you do it. Because it's mastering you at that point. You got to cast down these imaginations and the high things and then bring them into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Everything has to obey Christ. And that's something you have to pray for. You have to get down and say, God, I need this to stop and I need to need for it to be in obedience with you, Lord. Because I don't want to keep disobeying you. That's a part of the struggle of being human in a spiritual world. There's a str- Adam and Eve started a struggle for everyone. Listen, ain't nobody in here not struggling with something. Hey, oh, you know you can get up and leave if you don't like what I just said. If you're better than the rest of us, this is the wrong church anyway. That's what it was put in your life for. It's legit. It's a struggle. Adam and Eve had a struggle, and they're smarter than all of us. So we come to church, we get recharged, we get renewed, we get better. So we can overcome these things. Amen? There's some things in your life that used to be a struggle and they're not a struggle anymore. Am I, te- am I telling the truth? There's some things that you have overcome. You don't even deal with that anymore. That's proof that the power of God works. But that don't mean that there's not going to be something else. And then you got the same thing that happened to that struggle. The original struggle is going to happen to this struggle. And I'm going to defeat it. But that don't mean you're not going to struggle. And we ain't going to be that kind of church where everybody look. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nah, bruh. No, man, no, no, the devil coming after us all. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, I know you sanctimoniously sanctified and you don't even put your slippers on when you walk in the house. They just, they just show up on your feet. Your Yeezy slides, they just show up. Any color you think, you float in the house. I know you supersonic saving, you better than folks in your mind. But in here we all battling something because the devil is putting thoughts in all of our heads. He takes our past, he takes our upbringing, he takes our childhood, he takes our parents, he takes something and uses it. And we got to keep fighting it. You can go to a church that plays like that don't happen. But we in here getting what we need to fight. Amen. Because there's a fight out there. And from my estimation, the real fight ain't even started yet. Can I keep preaching in here? It's so important for us to live according to the word of God because when our actions are aligned with God's will, our faith remains what? So when we live right according to the word of God, our actions are aligned with God's will. This makes our faith stay intact. The devil attacks your faith by your behavior. See? Yeah, yeah. Your behavior is going to dictate your faith level. Yeah. He used David as an example for that. Because when David sinned, had the man killed with Bathsheba and all of that, man, some of them psalms he wrote, he didn't have much faith. Yeah, he laid it out and let you know how he was feeling. Kill me, Lord. I wish I was dead. I'd rather not be here. Why? Because he got in sin. He fell into sin. And that sin crippled his shield. He couldn't stand as strong as he was standing before. He started believing the stuff folks were saying. Yeah, he started believing that they was going to kill him. He started believing he was going to die of the disease. Yeah. 
So David was feeling that way because he fell into sin and it started making him feel weak. He started feeling defeated. Now later on, the Bible said he encouraged himself. He got where he needed to be. He got back strong, stronger than ever before. But prior to that, he was a mess. Yeah. So we all trying to fight. Amen. Amen. That's why it's so, look at somebody say, it's so important for us to live according to the word of God because when our actions are aligned with God's will, our faith remains intact. First John 5 and 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So you got to be born of God and then you got to overcome the world. That's where the victory is. The world represents sin. So you got to overcome the sin. Look at somebody say, overcome the sin. So when I talk about struggle, I'm not talking about somebody in here that's going to uh, lose to sin. It's a struggle because you're going to beat it. But the devil's going to keep putting things in your mind to try to make you sin. Because he can't make you sin. If he can make you sin, you can take him to judgment with you. Because you ain't fully at fault. When we allow things that can alter our thoughts to encamp around us. See, that's you. Putting all the stuff that can alter. Why are you friends with all them witches online? You know they're a witch. Moon is in their name. If moon is anywhere on that page, it's a witch. Why are you friends with witches? Why are you friends with people that don't even believe you are believing the truth? I don't understand. You put things around you that can alter your thoughts. You did it. Amen. Every time one bad friend leaves, somebody else gets your phone number. Why are all your friends male and you a woman? Oh. Yeah, you shouldn't even have male friends. You know why you shouldn't have them? Because you shouldn't need them. Why do you need them? That's the question that needs to be asked. They don't want to hear that. They have to, oh, man. They don't want to hear that. I ain't been, why are you friends with anybody that don't want you? That's insulting. He just want to be your friend. He, you just his boom boom. You his dog. You his dog. You know what that make you. Oh, I'm not Dr. God. I don't talk like that. But you know. Just <laughs> Uh, he old, he's old enough to say those things. I'm too young. But the, <laughs> but yeah, you his dog. And why all your friends, man? Females. You can't handle male companionship, bruh. Why are you putting these things around you? And you keep falling victim to them. Man, I'm preaching in here. Yeah, your faith. So when you allow things that can alter your thoughts to encamp around you, your faith is weakened and that's when you fall. Every time you fall into sin, I promise you, you can trace back and find the encampment. You can find what you put around you. You can find where you shouldn't have went. You can find the relationship you should have never started. You remember when it was just one inbox. Like they say, they slid in your DMs. Oh, that just sounds so horrible. My God. Can we change that phrase? 
But you remember when you first met them and now look what it turned into. You put that in your life. But then you come to church. <laughs> the devil is <laughs> <it> busy. <laughs> you did it and then after you fall constant failure when you keep falling it's going to birth disbelief then you stop believing in the power of God and his ability to set you free you don't believe no more because you're not free anymore huh. uh, constant failure birth Disbelief and negates faith, which lowers our protection from the enemy. Once you're on this path, the devil's got you. James said a double-minded man is what? Once you get double-minded. What do you mean double-minded? You come into church as a believer. You go home. You a freak. That's double-minded. You come to church and hear the message and believe and go home and turn into Tasmania. Fighting. Your husband or your wife spinning around knocking everything over. That's, that's you're double minded. You leave church and on the radio you turn on Kendrick Lamar. You're double minded. Well, ain't nobody perfect. Well, we better try to be. We better be in here trying to be. And you better learn from your mistakes. You only get, you only get so, just a certain measure of grace in certain mistakes. Eventually, the windows of heaven gonna close. Then he can come in and oppress us to the point of giving up or giving ourselves over to sin. That's the final straw. You're either going to give up or you're going to give yourself over to sin, which they're both the same thing. Romans 1 and 28, and he, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You remember when he was young, this is the scariest thing in the world, boy. The reprobated mind, but they, they now they you would be on the altar that that Sunday when the reprobated mind message got preached. Oh, don't you go too far. God gonna give you over to a reprobated mind, and you can't come back. What? You can't come back. It'd be just like Jesus never died. That's what they say. And I'm like, why are we here? I mean, man. The finality of it all. Oh, the reprobated mind. I had a woman tell me that, brother, you already God gave you over to the reprobated mind. We would, my dad's church was three hours away. I got in the car that night. I'll never forget it. I don't know, 10, 11 years old, something. I'm in the seat, sitting in the seat, and I felt the devil pull my soul out of my body and take it to hell in the car. And I thought I was done. She spoke it, which was a curse. And it just activated on me. And after that, I went three years or so just believing that there was no hope for me. That's a curse. That was witchcraft. Hey, man, you don't say that no kid. No way. Her old self. But <laughs> Listen to the passage. And even as they did not like to retain God in the, That don't sound like God just looked at him and said, okay, I'm giving you up. It sounds like they wanted to be gave up because they said, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Yeah. So he really wasn't really just giving them over to the mind as much as they had already turned over to the mind. A lot of times, God is taking credit because it happened on his watch. But this was their own doing, according to the scripture. 
Look at somebody and say, building a shield. Now, I got to show you how to build this faith shield. I'm not going to just talk about you needing it. But I'm going to give you instruction on how to build it. We always building this shield, too. This shield is never complete. You're going to keep building it because it's going to take licks, bruises, going to get cut, scrapes, everything. And you're going to have to keep repairing the shield because you got to keep using it. Amen? Oh, but if it's faith in Jesus, the shield should never go. I ain't talking about faith in Jesus. I'm talking about your faith. Your faith get tested daily. Amen. And your faith sometimes has weaknesses. And sometimes stuff get through your faith. See, man, are we a real, are we humans? You, we humans in here. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, and you don't understand what I'm preaching don't make us look like a bunch of hellions. It just makes God look powerful because he came to save us from all of this. That's the reason, that, that was the reason Jesus had to die. Look at somebody say, building the sheep. Oh, crazy part. Reading and repeating the word. Oh, this is so important. Look at somebody say, read and repeat. You don't just read. You know, if you get the Bible and just start reading, a lot of times you got to reread chapters. Yeah, you do. You'll read that whole chapter and be like, what just happened? And you got to go back. <laughs> that, you know what that is you know what that is your mind is full of stuff it just is could be your job it could be your relationship problem whatever the case your mind is full so if you sit there and try to silently read it's hard to engage in it now if you read in a romance novel or something and you just by the time you finish you hugging your son. You can get off in that book because that's what you want. You want that. Oh, yes, I, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm on this ship with Fabio. <laughs> His hair blowing in the, in the breeze. Uh, yes. <laughs> you just escaped. Mama! Mama! How you read with your eyes rolled to the back of your head? That's what I'm trying to say. You're not here. You're hearing, you on a cruise. But <laughs> you better watch them romance, man. You better watch them novels. I've cast a mini demon out of folks. I mean, one girl had a trash bag full of them. And she was possessed by every demon in that trash bag. She had the black romance novels. So you know that was some foolishness. Because you know, can't nobody get down and ignorant like us. The Harlequin ain't got nothing on the Negro Quinn. The Negro Quinn. You, boy, that's just. With that old Polaroid picture as the cover. Don't you. <laughs> Let me stop. Somebody going to think I'm racist. <laughs> well, he's racist, but he's talking about black people. I guess that's a different. But reading and, re reading and repeating the word is important. It's important. I'm going to tell you something. That, isn't it funny how you get a comic book or a magazine or Vogue or something? You pick that up, you in it. The outfits them girls got on, everyone you see, you earn it. How? But you pick up the Bible and the spirit of Sandman come over you. What you doing? Read, read. I'm reading the word. Sometimes you just gotta meditate. <laughs> I was working on this faith message and last night I went up in my office in my house and um, I started reading about the faith in Hebrew and you know by faith the by faith the by faith yeah. God told me to read it and y'all see don't judge me 
folk and see us. They were stupid. But when I was in my bedroom, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me to go read that. And then my first reaction was, eh. I mean, it's just not going to be that exciting. I'd rather go do, read something else in the Bible. But that right there, you know, the by faith, the whole, you know, hey, can I just be real? Three minutes into that, I couldn't read. I was crying so hard, yelling with my hands in the air because the Holy Spirit took me and put me in it. He said, look around you on Sunday morning and see my hand of faith. People came from all over this country to be in the midst of ABC. He said, that's by faith. He says, by faith. I got in it and I felt like I was with all of them as I began to read it. And the Holy Spirit told me, you tell them that tomorrow morning. You got to get in it. And, I mean, you got to get in it. You can't keep choosing foolishness over God's word. You can't keep making foolishness special and the bomb. And you talking about the devil stuff like it's all the everything. Do not just read the Bible casually, but read it out loud and what? Engage in it. The Bible is a living testament of God and Jesus Christ. Reading it aloud is a verbal declaration of faith in it. You got to read it aloud. Amen. Amen. the word. This is how you build the, build the shield. Yeah. Being under a true pastor or leader is the same as being in a military outfit under a captain or colonel. Yeah. Yeah. When the word is declared from a leader to the troops, it is then put into action and will yield results. Yeah. Huh. God calls pastors to lead and those that can follow his leading can avoid pitfalls, errors, and calamity just by heeding the voice of leadership. Man didn't choose pastors. That's God's invention in the Old and New Testament. So don't you listen to no jive turkeys telling you there's something wrong with having a pastor. The Bible don't say that. Matter of fact, the Bible guaranteed that he was going to give you good pastors after his own heart that will teach you the truth. This builds faith because seeing the preached word manifest in the actions builds our confidence in it. Building the shield requires fellowship with like-minded people. This is very important. The more you isolate, the more you stay in your head, the less of the Holy Ghost you're going to have. You don't have nobody to sharpen you. You don't have anybody to check you. The more time we spend around those that believe and are walking in their belief, the stronger our faith grows. Iron sharpens iron. Digital friends are an iron. Ain't no iron coming through that computer. Digital friends and fellowships are not the same as in-person physical gatherings. Coming together builds faith because it shows that we are not afraid of the noise and pestilence or anything else that comes to end our fellowship. That's faith. That builds faith. Everybody else was wearing masks. We coming in here, we wasn't wearing them. Everybody else was social distance. Not, not here. Because we had faith. Oh, see, somebody, somebody can't even process that. Look at somebody saying, it just is what it is. We didn't social distance because we had the faith not to. You didn't have that. Don't get mad.
Build that shield. You got to believe God for others. Uh oh, this is the. Ooh, ooh. This is what somebody like, now nah, I don't need this shield. That's all right. <laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, you got to believe. Uh, this is so important, y'all. Ooh. When we believe God for others, we are exercising faith. Exercise. The more you exercise, the stronger you get. And the same goes with exercising faith. So you got to use your faith for somebody else. That's exercising it. And that's building it so it'll work for you too. Yeah. Because the more you exercise. Now if you don't exercise, you're not going to be in shape. You're not going to be strong. If you want to look like Landon, you got to exercise. He wasn't born with the muscles, I promise. No, they came because of exercise. And the more he exercised, the stronger he got. Well, the more you exercise faith, the stronger you get. Listen to this. We can't believe God for ourselves, but tear others down and give up on them. It's not going to work. You keep trying it. It's not going to work. We must be willing to allow others to hide behind our shield when necessary. So God ain't gonna just build your shield robust and you just gonna be selfishly using it for yourself. God will fortify it even the more and make it stronger to quench all of the fiery darts of the enemy. Now you quenching your darts and darts of other folks. Most of the time it's darts you was about to shoot at them. Uh-huh. But if you're praying for them and loving on them, you ain't shooting darts at them. You share your shield with them. Build your faith. Can I keep? Man, this is a good message, right? Here. You got to guard your minds. Our bodies run on whatever it is we are putting in it. Just like your car. You know the difference between shell gas and Vagero. It's not the same quality. Not the same quality. That old convenience store that sell more chicken than gas. <laughs> when the gas station got a food name, the gas can't be good. Where you going to get your gas? Snacking Shack. Snacking Shack? I oh, know that gas is greasy. Some of that grease. They fry so much stuff, some of that grease has to get in that gas. I don't want to be pumping gas and smelling tacos. I know this gas is not the highest of quality. I want to smell gas if I'm pumping gas. If I'm pumping gas like a barbecue place. I know the barbecue place is good because I can smell the barbecue before I get there. Now, if I'm standing in there looking at the menu, ordering it, and I don't smell no barbecue, bro, this barbecue's not going to taste good. It's not going to be good. They back there balling it like wieners. Bro, I don't want no ball bisque or brisket. That's corned beef. That ain't brisket. So I got to smell it. Yeah, and I meet the folks taking my order talking loud and country. That's how I know the barbecue is good. Oh, if they talking loud and rude, yes. Uh, are you going to order? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, I will. Give me, give me just one more minute. Oh, yes, keep doing that because that's, that's telling me that the burn ins are going to be fire. They're going to be fire. Yeah, you keep that attitude, Sally. That means the cue is going to be on point. Am I telling the truth, Memphis? You know that on point. White people in here like, what? I just take it. so hard being black. It just, oh, my goodness. It's just so many nuances and just things that we just don't know.
But we got to guard our minds because whatever we, our, our bodies run on whatever it is we are putting in it. But bad foods, bad music, bad movies, and just evil, period, can change our minds and make us lose faith. Yeah. You're not going to run good with bad stuff in you. We must be careful what we put into our minds and bodies so that we can keep good thoughts and think the right way. This keeps our faith strong and shields us from attacks of the enemy. Amen? Amen. Summary! Oh, this message blessed me. It blessed me putting it together. I hope it blessed you. We cannot allow our minds to be altered by the plight of the enemy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So we must not allow him access to our minds. We have to keep a steady diet of God's word prevalent in our minds to fight against sin and keep our belief in Jesus intact. If you don't, you may be saved, but if you don't keep God's word prevalent in your mind, then you're not going to have a good fight against sin. Yeah, sin's going to be stronger than you. This builds our faith and raises our shield so that any and everything that the devil sends our way can be defeated and we can be victorious. Sure, we all take blows and hits from the enemy. Sometimes we feel that we cannot even continue fighting because we have taken so much. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. This is why hearing messages like this and allowing them to strengthen you is so important. <laughs> the word of God is sharper than any sword. It will cut the enemy down to size. And the more you hear it, the stronger your faith becomes. And you will shield yourself from a lot of things you used to contend with. In order to make it through these uncertain times that lie ahead, we must keep our faith in God strong. So that we can stand up and declare the power of God to this lost generation in preparation for Jesus' return. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Paul writes here in Romans, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For there it, ooh, to the Jew first and also, did Paul say that? Does that not just stop the whole black Hebrew life move? Like, they, it's over. Romans 1 and 16 just ended you. He said to the Jew first, so even if you Negroes are the Jews, good gracious. That's a close one. But even, even if you are the lost and found Jews or the whatever, he says... It is the power of God unto salvation to who? Everyone, everyone that believes. Then he tells you who everyone is. To the Jews first and then everyone else. For therein is the righteousness of God. What? Revealed from what? That means the faith you had 10 years ago, you got different faith now. Yeah. And as we keep going, your faith get stronger. Yeah. So the things you used to contend with, oh, I graduated. I don't deal with that no more. Now there's some other stuff I'm working on now, but that is God. Yeah. Faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by what? Faith. faith. Everyone stand to your feet. Yeah. Sure. Amen. Woo, this message blessed me. It blessed me when I was making it. Oh my goodness. So we're going to pray that your faith shield can be built. Look y'all, the only way to overcome it is through faith. You got to believe that you can. You got to believe that you can. So if you need help believing that you can overcome it, just come on up and we're going to pray right now. Whoever you are, just come up. I don't know what you're dealing with. Nobody knows. It ain't nobody's business. 
Amen. We don't want to know. We just want you to get past it. Amen. You ought to be tired of the devil making you feel like that. Tired enough to do something about it. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Just get as close as you can. Get in the aisle. Just to show that, it, hey, Lord, I'm responding to what, what I just heard. What I just heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Let's just bow our heads, everyone. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this word that we received. And Father God, we thank you for the delivery of it and how it touched our hearts to the point to where we needed to respond. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers, even about our struggle and whatever we're going through and whatever is happening in our lives, Father God. Whatever we're dealing with, Lord, you answered a lot of people today. I believe it, Lord. And so we pray right now, God, that this word will take root and that the enemy will not be able to pluck it up. It will take deep roots and sprout and make us like that tree planted by the rivers of water, unmovable, unshakable, that tree that's not going anywhere. Father God, we believe that your word can make us strong. So God, we receive what was said and we will take these tools that you've given us and build our faith shield Lord to shield us from all the fiery darts of the enemy keep us strong Father God and everyone lift your hands right now and Father God we pray for those in our lives Lord those that we may have had issue with those that may have hurt us those that Father God we've neglected to pray for names we don't want to call people we don't want to think about all of those things. Father God, we release that right now. with the, Just symbolically with our hands lifted up and our hands open. We are releasing it right now. We're releasing that the memory of that bad relationship, that bad person, that bad words that were exchanged. Father God, that hurt, whatever they did to us, whatever happened. We release that because we don't want that to get in the way of our faith in you, Lord. We don't want that to hinder. We don't want the devil constantly using that and bringing that up, using it as a catalyst to make us weak, to make us fall into temptation. Father God, but we pray right now that it is gone. As we release that person, that situation, Father God, we release it right now. And we pray for them. We pray for them, but Father, we're gonna keep it moving. We're going to move closer to you and we're going to let it go. And Father, keep our faith intact and our belief strong in this last hour, God, that no disbelief will enter into our mind, but we'll continue to stand strong in faith, trusting and believing in you that you're going to see us through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your arms around somebody and tell them I'm stronger now. And if you need to get behind my shield, it's strong enough for the both of us. Hallelujah. 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 You may be on your way to your seat. Hallelujah. 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 What you playing, PJ? What's that? We come this far by faith? Okay. Come on, Elder, go on and come in.
and finish this. Leaning on the 